Imagine the following scenario taking place in a well-developed country like the Netherlands. This is Rob. Rob is a former Nazi. Back in the day he traveled to Nazi Germany in order to learn how to organize a violent Nazi takeover in the Netherlands. Rob is a big fan of Adolf Hitler and for many years Rob has also been a member of a Nazi group in the Netherlands and for two years he was even a member of the board of directors of this organization. On several occasions Rob has denied the Holocaust and even decades after the Nazi disaster in Germany he has said openly that quote what Adolf Hitler has put into practice in Germany is an example for us all and I still believe that this is the case. Now imagine that this man Rob would later become the leader of a political party in the Netherlands. How do you think the media would respond to this? How do you think the society would respond to this? It is safe to say that Rob becoming the leader of a political party would not be accepted in the country at all and that it would lead to mass protests. But let's imagine that the society would not respond to it and that Rob could simply become the leader of this political party and participate in the elections, doing interviews, debates, etc. So this Nazi who has said that Adolf Hitler is an example can just participate in the elections as if it were the most normal thing in the world. Now imagine that in this election there is also a competing candidate whose popularity is increasing rapidly. And now imagine that Rob, a few days before the day of the election would get in front of a camera and say that quote I hope he has cut himself in his finger and I hope that the wound is so deep that the bleeding won't stop before the day of the election. Now try to imagine that this really happened. This former Nazi goes into politics and then says this about his political opponent. What would you think would be the response coming from the media and from the larger society? Remember that this scenario is taking place in the Netherlands a well-developed Western European country. It is safe to say that Rob's political career would be finished as a result of these remarks. But now let's imagine that the situation gets even weirder and even more extreme and that the other candidate, the one from the other party, the man that Rob implied should bleed to death, one day before the day of the election gets murdered outside on the streets, shot through the head by an assassin. And imagine that later it turns out that this assassin is also a Nazi, just like Rob. Now imagine how the media and the larger society would respond to this. People would go outside, flood the streets to demand the immediate dismantling of the Nazi networks which apparently exist in the country. If a Nazi politician who has denied the Holocaust supported Adolf Hitler and even followed courses in Nazi Germany on how to implement National Socialism in the Netherlands, can just say out loud on television that he hopes that his competitor won't stop bleeding before the day of the election and that a few days after that his competitor actually gets murdered by another Nazi. Then there is apparently a huge problem in the country, right? But now imagine that all of this happened and that the media, the large society and the academic world would not demand the dismantling of these Nazi networks, but that they would instead just continue their lives as if nothing else happened than just some coincidental political murder. And now imagine that a few years after this horrifying event, Rob would somehow become the vice president of the Red Cross in the Netherlands. The Red Cross. So this former Nazi who praised what Adolf Hitler has done in Germany and who denied the Holocaust and who has been a member of a Nazi group in the Netherlands and who has said during an election that his political opponent should bleed to death which was then preceded by another Nazi showing up and actually murdering his political opponent is now suddenly the vice president of the Red Cross in the Netherlands. Imagine the headlines people if this were true. It is easy to imagine how the media in a well-developed country would respond to this. It is also easy to imagine how the academic world would respond to all of this. Academics would produce articles on the normalization of murderous Nazis ending up in important positions and how this could lead to a decrease of the moral standard in the Netherlands. People who are working for the Red Cross would be outraged and demand the immediate resignation of Rob. If he wouldn't leave, they would probably stop working for the organization. But try to imagine that all of this really happened in the Netherlands. Imagine that Rob really exists and that this scenario really happened. Imagine that after everything that this man did, he just became the vice president of the Red Cross. And it wasn't a problem. 
And imagine that after having been the vice president of the Red Cross for 10 years, Rob would then become the chairholder of the board of an institution responsible for safeguarding the quality of the education system in the Netherlands. So this Nazi would then be able to influence what children in the Netherlands learn in school. But now imagine that this imaginary scenario goes even further than this. Imagine that Rob would later again become the leading candidate of his political party, this time for the Senate elections. Can you still imagine how the media would respond? Can you still imagine how the academic world would respond? Or is it perhaps impossible to imagine all this? Because in any normal country, the career path of this man, Rob, this Nazi that I'm describing simply wouldn't be possible. I mean, you're probably thinking, where the hell is he going in this video? What he's describing is ridiculous. That would never happen in the Netherlands. If all this were true, then the Netherlands must be some society that has been secretly taken over by Nazis or something like that. For this scenario to really have happened, there must be Nazis in the media, Nazis in the academic world, Nazis everywhere. Because this scenario that I I'm describing would only be possible in an actual Nazi society. There is no other way. But let me reveal something here. Rob really exists and everything I just described is real. This really happened in the Netherlands. There is only one small detail. The word Nazi needs to be replaced by the word communist. This man is Paul Rosenmüller, a former communist who was very enthusiastic about Mao Zedong and Pol Pot. In 1976, Rosenmüller traveled to socialist Albania in order to learn how communism could also be implemented in the Netherlands. Three years later, in 1979, he said, quote, What Mao has put into practice in China is an example for us all, and I still believe that this is the case. He was especially a fan of the Red Khmer in Cambodia, a regime that killed a quarter of its own population, 2 million people, in a place that later became known as the Killing Fields. The Red Khmer used ways of torturing people. Paul Rosemuller kept denying the existence of the Cambodian Killing Fields and he used to be an active member of the Dutch Maoist group Marxist-Leninist, the Red Dawn, an organization attempting to implement communism in the Netherlands. In 1981 and 1982, he was even a member of the board of directors of this organization. In 1989, when the Dutch Communist Party merged with two other parties to become the Green Party, Paul Rosemuller became a member of parliament for the brand new Green Party. The response from the media? Nothing. In 1994, he became the leader of the Green Party. And no, there were no critical questions, no protests, no response coming from the media, no academics speaking out against it. In 2002, during the elections, one of his political opponents was getting quite popular so a few days before the election Paul Rosemuller said the following about the man in question. Ik denk dat uh, Fortuyn zich in zijn eigen vingers gesneden heeft. Ik hoop dat hij in zijn eigen vingers gesneden heeft en ik hoop dat de wond zo diep is dat het bloeden voor 15 mei niet ophoudt. A few days later, his political opponent got murdered by a green activist. And no, there were no critical questions, no demands coming from society to dismantle these Marxist networks, no academics asking critical questions, nothing. And yes, I'm not kidding, after all of this happened in 2004, he became the vice president of the Red Cross in the Netherlands. And again, no critical questions from the media, no employees of the Red Cross speaking out, nothing. And from 2013 until this very day, he is shareholder of the VORAT, the institute responsible for safeguarding the quality of the education system in the Netherlands. And again, no outrage, no discussion, not in the media, not in the academic world. No people working in education speaking out against it, nothing. As if it is the most normal thing in the world. How is this possible? Mao Zedong killed 45 million people. Pol Pot killed 2 million people. How can a man who supported both become vice president of the Red Cross in the Netherlands? How can a man who had attempted for years to implement a Maoist revolution in the Netherlands get the position where he can influence the education system in the Netherlands? You want to know what the state media said when Rosemuller once again became the leader of the Green Party for the Senate elections in 2018? Paul Rosemuller, leader for Senate election. No critical questions, no critical remarks, nothing. And now he's actually a senator. 
Let's conclude this video with the following. What imaginary Rob managed to pull off in the Netherlands would only be possible if the Netherlands were a society dominated by the ideology of Nazism. In order for imaginary Rob to do what he did, the media would need to be controlled by Nazis. The academic world would need to be controlled by Nazis. The overall worldview of the Dutch population would need to be heavily influenced by the ideology of Nazism. This is the only situation imaginable in which imaginary Rob would be able to do the things that he did and have the career that he has and get away with it. Now, given the fact that Paul Rosemuller has been able to do the things that he did and have the career path that he has, what ideology is dominating the Dutch media? What ideology is dominating the Dutch academic world? And what ideology has heavily influenced the overall worldview of the Dutch population?